Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing off the latest developments that I've been making in my Bloons Tower Defense clone which I'm recreating in the Unity game engine. So lately I've been working on the tower upgrade system. So in Bloons Tower Defense every time you place a tower on the map these towers have the ability to be upgraded with one of two upgrades. Now these upgrades can basically like increase the range of these towers or change out the weapon that they use and just overall make them more effective. So I'm starting to build out this upgrade system and I'm doing some cool things with the UI for you know how these upgrades are actually displayed to the player. And so that's what I'm going to be going over today is basically how I created this UI. And then in the next video, I'm going to be going over how I actually implemented the full upgrade system. Anyways, if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about video game development. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. If you do want to see any more videos about the Bloons Tower Defense clone that I'm recreating, you can go check out the playlist, which I will link up here and down in the description below. Okay, so here we are over in Unity. I'm just going to real quickly go over kind of my basic project setup here. So in a previous video, I did go over how I'm using scriptable objects to um, basically display different information about the tower to the player. So I'm going to be building off that a little bit in this video. So you'll see that if we click on the Dart Tower info, this gives us some more information about the Dart Tower. So you can see, of course, it has the name of Dart Tower. This is how much it costs. This is what the speed is and so on. Now a couple more that I've added since the previous video, you can see that there's these two um, tower upgrade paths. Right now um, in Bloom's Tower Defense 1, basically each tower only has two upgrades that you can do. Um, however, in future versions, these are kind of like upgrade paths where you can kind of like incrementally upgrade and the upgrades sort of build upon each other. But for right now, these are just single upgrades. Now these upgrades, these are also scriptable objects. So for example, if we were to go onto the long range darts upgrade, you'll see that these are basically the properties of the long range darts. So of course it has the name of long range darts. And then um, here we have a drop down for upgrade type. So you can see the four upgrade types we have are range, which basically increases the effective range of the tower. Frequency basically controls the cooldown time. So you know a greater frequency is going to reduce the cooldown time and it's gonna be able to shoot out darts more frequently. Duration is one specific to something like the ice tower where it has like a duration that applies to the balloons of how long they're frozen. Weapon is going to control the weapon that the tower is actually going to fire. So instead of just maybe the standard dart, maybe you upgrade to piercing darts, which allows you to pop two balloons with one single dart. And then here you'll see we have some other properties for the upgrade like the cost, uh, the description, the icon, as well as the upgrade value. So the upgrade value in the case of the long range darts is going to increase the range up to 150. And then this final category is for weapon. And so um, of course the long range darts, it only changes the upgrade value. So it, is, it doesn't need anything for weapon. However, if we're to go onto the piercing darts here, you'll see that upgrade value is set to zero because it isn't changing any you know, upgrade values or anything like that. However, the weapon, you'll see that it switches out to the piercing darts weapon. And so you can take a look at this scriptable object here. It's basically just a pretty standard scriptable object. Um, there's not a whole lot of craziness going on. All right, so now to kind of show how I have my UI set up, basically I just have this panel, which is just this background panel right here. And then on here, it includes some properties such as the tower name, tower speed, and tower range, which are all just displayed right here. And then down here, we have the two placeholder buttons for upgrade paths. And so these are basically just configured as UI buttons. And then on them, we have an image, which we're gonna be putting a little icon for each of the upgrades. Then we have the name of the upgrade, as well as the cost of the upgrade. So then you'll see in the selected towers UI controller script, I have serialized fields for basically all of those UI objects and I have them broken out with these header attributes. And what that does is it gives us basically these nice little sections in our inspector over here. So it's really nice for organization. So you see, of course, at the top, I have some controllers I need reference to. And then I have some things like the tower name and tower speed and range text. And then I have all the UI elements for upgrade one as well as upgrade two. So the button, the image, the name, and the cost text. And then the last thing that I've defined are these data transfer objects. So these are upgrade button DTOs. And the data transfer object, I just actually have this set up as a private class called upgrade button DTO. And basically this is just a data transfer object, which is a way that we can easily pass around some things that we like to group together. 
So in the case of me having these two upgrade buttons, which contain, you know, a button, a TMP text, a text mess pro text for the name text and cost text, as well as an image for the icon, it really makes sense to bundle all these in a data transfer object. And I'll be showing you where we use that in just a moment. And then you'll see in the start function, here's where we actually assign all the values to these data transfer objects. So you'll see for the upgrade one, here's where we assign all those UI values for the upgrade button one and then same thing that we do for the upgrade button too. And if you're not familiar with this syntax, I believe it's a newer C-sharp feature, and it just allows us to basically assign properties when we're defining the new object. So it's really nice, it keeps our code super clean here. And you'll see that I am using some events here. I'm not gonna go really too into depth on that because I did make a previous video about how I'm using events in this. I'll link it again up in the card as well as in the description below. And all you need to know is basically when I actually click on the tower, then that's when it's actually going to display the upgrade information over on the sidebar UI. And then so here's the function right here that actually displays the selected tower UI. We do need a reference to the tower controller so we can get some more information about the tower that we're trying to display. Of course, we're just gonna set the selected tower panel as active so we can actually see the UI elements. And then here's where we set the general things like the tower's name, its speed, as well as its range. And then actually have the upgrade information basically stored inside this upgrade controller, which has an array of these upgrades so we can just grab these and put them into these variables here just so we can kind of have a reference to those. And then all we need to do is for each of the buttons, we'll just call setup upgrade button. So we're gonna need another reference to the tower controller as well as upgrade one, which is this custom abstract class that I've created called tower upgrade. And I'll be showing this off in just a moment. And then finally we pass in our upgrade button data transfer object number one. So this gives us access to all the UI elements for the leftmost upgrade button. And then we're gonna do the same thing over on the other upgrade button, again, passing into the information on upgrade two, as well as the second data transfer object for all the UI elements on the right button. And so here's that setup upgrade button function. Basically right here we're just breaking out all the UI elements on the uh, data transfer objects just so we can have you know clean and easy access to those and then here's where we set the name of the upgrade as well as the icon image of the upgrade next we're gonna do a button dot on click dot remove all listeners the reason we do this is because when we're creating a new button we of course don't want it to like you know trigger all the events that were on it previously Basically, if we didn't have this line and we went to upgrade one of our towers, it would upgrade all the previous towers that we've already clicked on, which you know might be cool, but it's not exactly what we want to happen. And then finally, you can see that we have three different states that the button can be in. So if we've already purchased the upgrade, we're gonna set the button's interactable flag to false, which means that you know if we have already purchased it, we can't you know, purchase it again. And then we'll set the cost text to already bought as well as the upgrade cost. The next case is gonna be if we cannot afford the upgrade. In this case, again, we're gonna set the button's interactable flag to false. So we can't click it if we can't buy it. And then we'll let the player know that they cannot afford it. And we'll also um, display the upgrade cost so they know how much it will cost. And then the final phase is basically if we can purchase it, we're gonna set the button dot interactable equal to true. And here's where we actually assign the button dot on click dot add listener. And then right here, we're gonna be calling the upgrade tower function and we're gonna pass in a little bit more information about the upgrade as well as the tower controller. And then finally, we'll just set the cost text to let the player know how much they can purchase it for. Now that upgrade tower function is going to go um, on the tower upgrade that we pass in and call the purchase upgrade. So here we are back to this abstract class that I was talking about, about the tower upgrade. And again, because this is an abstract class, we cannot actually instantiate anything that's a base tower upgrade. We do have things that inherit from it, such as range upgrade or weapon upgrade. I will be breaking these out into their own files later on, but I'm just having them all in the same file um, just because it's easy for the tutorial video. But you'll see that the base abstract class basically contains things that all the tower upgrades are gonna have, you know, like a name, description, cost, and an icon, as well as like an is purchase state. And then we do have this public virtual void to purchase the upgrade. Again, that's what we're gonna be calling when we click on the button. And this is just the base implementation of the function. We're gonna set is purchased equal to true. And we're also going to decrement the money by how much the item costs. So then you'll see that we do have the child public 
public classes for the range upgrade as well as the weapon upgrade which of course both inherit from the tower upgrade. And again, I'm going to be showing how I actually upgrade these towers in a future video. But for right now, basically all they're gonna do is call the base purchase upgrade and then just debug log a message to the screen saying upgrading range to range value. And then for the weapon upgrade, it's going to say changing weapon to weapon.name. All right, so then if I come over into Unity and we can actually go ahead and uh, maybe place down a tower, you'll see that I do have these two upgrades available for piercing darts as well as long range darts. So let's go ahead and upgrade to the piercing darts and we'll see what happens here. You'll see that right now in the debug console, we just do have this message saying changing weapon to piercing darts. Again, it's not actually doing anything. It's just logging a message to the console right now. And then so you see that now the piercing darts is in the state of already bought. So we can't actually purchase the piercing darts again. However, we can purchase the long range darts. So we can go ahead and click on that. You see that the long range darts is now in an already bought state. And if we go over into the console, you see that we do have a log message saying upgrading the range to 150. Now we can come in here and actually go ahead and uh, place down two of these dart towers. So you see that now um, on both of these dart towers, we can actually no longer afford the piercing darts upgrade on either of them. Now let's go ahead and say upgrade to the long range darts on this one. So you'll see that the piercing darts we still cannot afford. The long range darts has already been bought for 100. And then if we come over to the dart tower, we cannot afford either of the upgrades. And so anyways, that's the basics of how I have my upgrade UI set up. Again, stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna be showing you how I actually implement upgrading the towers. So anyways, if you did enjoy today's video and you learned something, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about video game development. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or any suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. Let me know if there's anything specific that you'd like to learn about this Bloons Tower Defense game that I'm creating, or recreating, I should say. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.